it was ridiculous to see how down the Vancouver Canucks were before Bruce Boudreau took over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, there's no question about it that it wasn't, uh, it wasn't ideal, which, which is interesting, Frank, you say that, but you also believe, so if, Tra why were they so down when Travis Green was there, but you also feel that Green's a guy who's a good coach will get a second opportunity. So what wasn't, what wasn't matching? Well, I'm not there. I don't know. All I can do is, you know, the numbers I think speak for themselves. I think they were also in a spot where I think as a coach, you coach differently depending on the position you're in, in terms of, you know, Bruce Boudreaux is coming in and he's, you know, if he, if they're in the playoff conversation, it's a win. Yeah. The heat is off. Travis Green's coaching for his life. He's coaching for his job. Yeah. That's, well, that's a, that's a big big difference there was a lot there was a lot riding on the line for the entire Canucks organization obviously to start the year yeah like to me Bruce Boudreaux and I said at the day he got hired the biggest advantage he had coming in was that his best players weren't very good and uh, you know so now m maybe Elias Pettersson's struggles were because of Travis Green who knows but if you look at the best I think the players, jury's still out on him yeah like the best players in Vancouver in how they were performing pre Boudreaux and then post. So was it all Bruce Boudreaux? Did he just click or did the players at some point you have to look? Cause I don't care who you are. Every coach I've ever talked to, you're only as good as your best players play, right? Mm -hmm. You know, Ken Hitchcock always had the philosophy. You got to get your five leaders and they have to be on the same page as you. And if they are, that'll filter down to the rest of the team. Cause if, if no offense, if the third, a third line winger doesn't like you, that's not impacting your game. But if your top line center and your top defenseman aren't on the same page as you as a coach, your chances of success are much lower, but I'm curious about Vancouver because, you know, Elias Pettersson to me, there was a few years ago and, and I chuckled at it. People were writing Vancouver. Oh, Pettersson's as good as McDavid because of his defensive game. And I was like, you're on, you're overrating the numbers that your stat sheets telling you, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And Elias Pettersson, there's a guy who I look at, he's got to get stronger in the off season and they got to find out exactly if he can be consistent because this isn't just a 20 game run here this has been this has been two seasons where he has not been the player i think they hoped he'd be in vancouver yeah but he's he's turned it on in a big way the last few weeks like you're seeing now why the hype is there like sure. it's, it's he's he's uncovering a bit of it again Right. Is... I, but that's my point. Consistency, Frank, right? Like if, if you're what that's, and it's the hardest thing to do in the NHL, but if you're going to be a big time productive player and you're paid much consistency is what separates guys at the mm -hmm. end of the day, it's the players who can find that consistency. No one's perfect every game. Of course not, but they might have a bad two periods and then boom, they make a big play in the third. It's a key goal away they go. And when you look at Pedersen, yeah, he's down the stretch. He's been good. I would agree wholeheartedly, but they're not paying him to be good for 10 or 15 games. No, no, they're not. But I, I don't, I think the jury's out on him. I, I said it and I, you know, let's see what he looks like at the start of next season. Okay. I think there's something about that market. I really do. Like look at the Sedins and their careers. Well, they're pretty good. Like that took them a no, few they, years they were to get pretty awful. The first five years of their career. Yeah. Well, I, th I think they're awful. A, they were yeah. very, they were disappointing. I should walk that back. They were disappointing compared to the hype. Yeah. So, but so that's where we get to the hype can be very misleading. I see it all the time. I see it in every market on a top five pick. They're just like, Oh, here comes the savior. There's very like not all top five picks are created equal. Right. Like people were, were down on Lafreniere and I'm like, he's not even like when you're a teenager in the NHL, I, I, I almost disregard your statistics because there's very few teenagers who even perform well. Look at Leon Drysaddle. Leon Drysaddle is a heart trophy winner. He's, you know, he's one of only 24 players now in NHL history to have 50 goals and hundred points in two seasons. Yet he couldn't play in the NHL at 19. He had to go back to junior. He wasn't ready. And there's nothing wrong with that. He he should be the poster boy for every other organization that wants to rush a teenager and say, hmm, they're not strong enough physically yet, mm -hmm. right? So they need to work on different things. And that's not a knock. So I, I think that you're right about the hype, but sometimes but the I think the hype- didn't come in until they were 20. Yeah. And then, it's, it's, but still you look at Europeans, Frank. They had their first four seasons and I'm just looking at Hendrick's numbers. Yeah, 40 a half points. A po half a point per game. Yeah, but they were also on the second line, second power play unit, right? Because they had And then the, they went on a seven-year run yeah. where they were way over a point per game and the best, probably the 
most consistent dominant force in the league over that stretch. Yeah. Uh, prime example of 24, right? Lots of players don't get comfortable until they're a few years in the league. It's not mm-hmm. just defensemen, right? I, and learning to score is in the NHL is one of the hardest things to do. I just think what I'm saying is I think there's something to be said for a player finding their footing in that market. Okay. Yeah, you could be Especially right. Especially a speed that I don't know. No. Well, historically, a lot of them, you know, you're coming over from Europe. It's a completely different game on a different ice surface. Not as much anymore, but because as they're getting to NHL size rinks more over there. But it's a vastly different um, type. And you look, a lot of them, 23, 24, that's when they start to to figure it out. And so Elias Pettersson, maybe that's, maybe it's him, but whoever that like Bruce Boudreaux, he'll be the first guy to tell you if Elias Pettersson's close to a point of game player, well, then their chances of winning are increased significantly. Right. Um, when mm-hmm. he's not, they're not going anywhere. There's, I don't know. I don't know a team in the league. Well, I guess maybe Tampa that when you lose one of your top guys, you don't, it doesn't impact you. Right. Right. So, so Elias Pettersson, real deal or not? Well, the, 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 can Elias Pettersson be an 80 point player? Yes. Right. Right now. Could he, could he be a hundred point guy? That's hard to say. He, he's going to have to take a I step. Mean, statistically, in the, he's more or less already been an 80 point player. Now to me, you're not an 80 point player until you're 80 point player. Six. So. I mean, sh- two shortened seasons, 66 and 68. Like he, he's basically a point per game guy. True. But the other, the reason to be an 80 point player, Frank, is you got to play. Right. And, and injuries have, that's part of it. Right. You know, like when people always want to points per no, game, they and, were, a lot of them were co- like um, they were COVID. Yeah. So I, uh, we'll, we'll see. I, I, I could say maybe he's an 80 point guy, but to be like a hundred point guy, like look at Johnny Gaudreau, Johnny Gaudreau's had an unreal career. This is his first time as a hundred point guy. I think people, they just assume that the net, like the next step for Pedersen's to be a hundred point guy. The next step for Elias Pedersen is to be an 80 point guy, three, four years in a row. That's hard to do. That's fair. Does he have it in him, though? That's what I'm asking. If he can stay healthy, I think he does. 